So how does somebody go from getting rejected to Apple to then actually getting hired by them? In this video, we have an amazing story of a student who did industrial engineering at a lesser known college, face rejection and challenges, but find newer, better ways at getting hired at top companies here in America, which is totally gonna to help you guys out in your job search. Check it out. Hey friends, welcome to Chan Coaching. Rob here, and we love helping internationals be successful in their cross-cultural journeys, especially with studies and jobs here in America. In this amazing video, you're gonna learn about industrial engineering, careers here in America, overcoming job rejection, how to get into a top company in newer, better ways you may be not familiar with, besides just applying online, which doesn't really work. So check it out and meet our guest, Nandini. We go ahead and introduce yourself. So a little bit about my background. My name is Nandini Anantala, and I'm originally from South India, Hyderabad. So I moved to United States in 2014 to pursue my master's in industrial engineering. And prior to that, I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. I have about four years of manufacturing experience, and all my experience have been in factory setting, you know, working in a factory. And uh, I'm really very happy to be where I am today. Actually, now that I think back and reflect upon, it's really amazing because when I first started my career as a mechanical engineering, I always used to get questions on, oh, why are you pursuing mechanical engineering being a woman? I was one of the uh, 10 women in our class who actually did mechanical engineering. And I always had this question on whether I would be able to work in a factory. But I think that I had a wonderful experience working in different factories and different industries. I started my very first job with an automotive supplier in Georgia. And uh, after that, I worked for companies such as General Motors, uh, Whirlpool Corporation, and right now I, I'm currently working for Apple. So yeah, I'm very happy to be here today with Chai and Coaching and uh, share my career experience. I'm hoping that this video helps students or young professionals out there uh, answer some of their questions. Definitely. I'm really excited to be a part of sharing your story. It's going to impact so many people. And I love that you're from Hyderabad. That was the first place I worked in India. So I, I love and miss the biryani there. So Oh yeah, yeah. I love biryani. <laughs> <laughs> Great memories. But let's jump in. Nalini. What is industrial engineering and what do people need to know about it? So uh, I know a lot of people out there uh, might not know what is an industrial engineering because if it is a non-technical course, usually they don't talk a lot about it. But to put it in simple words, in layman terms, industrial engineers figure out how to do things better. So we work on optimizing complex processes in an organization. So we work on improving the efficiency, improving the productivity and reducing the cost. So I can actually take an example and explain. For example, if you take a company which manufactures, let's say, maybe a coffee cup or, you know, tea cup. <laughs> when, when you look at that manufacturing, as an industrial engineer, we define what should be the process flow in order to manufacture that cup. How do we set up a factory layout and where should the equipment go? Where should the tools go? And uh, and uh, we also responsible for defining the work process for all the assemblers and technicians in a manufacturing facility. Ultimately, our goal is to make sure the customers are getting the product in a faster and cheaper way. I actually recently read a book. It's in the way they explain the, an industrial engineer is very interesting to me. I take this opportunity to explain um, what are the key three elements of an industrial engineer. So number one, industrial engineer should have the technical and analytical ability of an engineer. And number two, industrial engineer should have the business understanding and you know the acumen of being an MBA. And number three, on a day-to-day -day basis, we work with a lot of people on the shop floor and also leadership. So so we should be able to put people forefront in making our decisions. So if you actually create a Venn diagram of all these three things, industrial engineer would be a mix of, you know, these three elements. The beauty of industrial engineering is you can really work in any industry. It could be anything like aerospace, automotive, even chocolate manufacturing or uh, Disney World. <laughs> so there are endless possibilities. Uh, whatever the industry you like, the chances are very high that you will find the role of an industrial engineer. I love it. And why did you choose to do a master's? of industrial engineering at Texas Tech University, you know, go Red Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, First of all, when I was doing my bachelor's in mechanical engineering, so we had this one course, uh, which is actually titled as industrial engineering. And that was when I got introduced to industrial engineering and then different manufacturing process. It got me curious on learning more. And I was lucky enough to work on a project, or maybe you could say it's like an unpaid internship where I worked on a, a CNC machine. So as part of that experience, I was able to program the CNC machine and build some prototypes and some parts and products. So when I saw 
saw that a raw material being transformed into different products that tangible product experience was very fascinating to me and uh, and you know i wanted to learn more about different manufacturing process out there and how do we make this process better so that's when i decided to pursue my masters in industrial engineering so regarding texas tech i had a couple of different reasons on why i chose texas tech first of all um texas tech offers a very interesting mix of courses for an industrial engineer and also the courses they offer are very practical oriented and the projects or case studies we worked on are, uh, are coming from a real time example so we worked on projects where we would uh, design a facility or uh, or oh, how do we let's take an airport example how do we make sure passengers uh, go to their destinations on time and safely so it's very you know like practical and real time oriented uh, case study so and uh, that was one of the main reason and the second reason being uh, of course uh, texas the cost of living is cheaper compared to a lot of uh, states out there and uh, that also played a very you know important role in picking texas tech and another reason uh, in texas tech it, we have a very diverse group so people from different cultures and different backgrounds you know were part of texas tech so i highly believe that when people from different cultures come together the ideas or thinking process you know that they bring into table would be really different and you know that helps us to grow and learn right so these are some of the reasons why i chose texas tech and definitely i had a wonderful experience and uh, i learned a lot from that university i love it i love it and a big question that any student wants to know about is what is the job scope and what are the career opportunities you know for whatever they're going to study so yeah mm-hmm. what's the job scope like for industrial engineering yeah uh, i'm pretty sure you know that's probably favorite question for many in my opinion i highly believe industrial engineers are demand now rather than any time before during the pandemic uh the reason why i say that is so when i was working for whirlpool corporation and when we first started experience in the covid and pandemic we had to shut down the factory you know for the safety of our employees uh we were actually manufacturing refrigerators so a lot of uh, customers you know they wanted to buy the refrigerator to store the food right so so we also want to make sure our customers are receiving the products and you know we are able to deliver that in that situation uh the first thing that management did was to approach industrial engineer and then you know i've been tasked to figure out okay how do we redesign this layout and come up with a plan where our employees could work in a six feet distance or safe environment and and then you know being able to make those products so um, it was it was really satisfying for me for, uh, to work on projects like that because not only you are helping the customer receive the product but also helping the employees come back to work and you know have active income and also right now a lot of companies and manufacturing facilities are going towards the automation process so industrial engineers also play a key role in continuous improvements and you know optimizing so for these reasons in my opinion, opinion definitely industrial engineers are in demand and uh, regarding the job scope so there are different domains an industrial engineer could specialize on it could be manufacturing or data analytics uh, or supply chain or procurement consulting forecasting so there are different paths that an industrial engineer could you know take so i could talk a little bit more about manufacturing because that's where my experience have been so for manufacturing when i first started applying for the jobs you know after graduation at least i was i was open to different industries and different roles because an industrial engineer could qualify for a quality engineer or process engineer manufacturing engineer a uh, continuous improvement specialist or pro- uh, production engineer so these are all the different possibilities so i was really open to uh, any role because i wanted to get into a company and then learn more more about these roles and see where my interest could be and you know and take my career path in that direction but if somebody knows you know where they want to go what path they would like to take that's good but if you are not sure about that then you could these are the different possibilities and um, regarding the career uh, definitely uh, you know one should take best use out of their linkedin uh i would say because i i got a lot of messages and you know i, I got a lot of the job request from linkedin where the recruiters approach me so if i have to categorize different strategies and uh, tiers of uh, application i would say if you are able to uh, build your profile in such a way where you are actually creating uh, that impact where recruiters are able to reach out to you that's the best way possible out there if not then the next best method is having that referral or recommendation from a hiring manager or hiring team member then the next one next one would be getting a referral from somebody who work in that company and then the last approach should be actually applying to a job online because i know a lot of people think it's easy and you know it's very attractive 
but that's not the way usually people get you know calls and you know like in in united states most of the job application would uh, get filled through networking or you know referrals so so that should be the approach and that should help you guys to prioritize i love it i'm so <laughs> glad you said that cuz it's exactly what i say to you yeah jobs come from referrals networking mm-hmm. branding and standing out and applying online is definitely not the best way and should be the lowest priority so i'm so glad you said that nongni <laughs> actually wonderful videos and chai and coaching on uh, you know how you could make the best out of linkedin and networking and definitely i would advise to follow those yes we will get some other great resources to help you guys out and if you guys are learning a lot from nongni give a big thumbs up and hit that like button and say thanks to her for sharing and adding valuable content for you guys and telling her story now let's jump in and what people really want to hear is this apple story you know what happened <laughs> tell us your job journey with apple and the bumps in the road and and what happened there so yeah definitely there were a lot of twists and turns uh, so i first interviewed with apple beginning of last year recruiter reached out to me again on linkedin and then you know uh, it was for a different role it was not for the operation program manager the recruiter asked me if i would be interested in that role so i wanted to learn more about and um, i started the process that whole interview experience went for about 2 months i went through each and every round until the final round so after all that i actually uh, got a rejection <laughs> usually i always have the difficulty of getting a call from the recruiter and whenever i used to get a call i always used to make it so i couldn't really accept the rejection you know it was very sad mm. but then i i didn't want to stop there you know i wanted to uh, utilize that contact right so i reached out to the recruiter when i was interviewing for the different role uh, from the team members i learned about operation program manager role and i actually really liked this role because all my experience have been very technical very hands on right uh, uh, being an industrial engineer but this operation program manager role actually involves you to goes into your soft skills uh how do you communicate with different cross functional teams or how do you influence others when they are not reporting to you so that is where i wanted to grow in my career and then that role was very interesting to me so so yeah i reached out to the recruiter and first of all i asked for the feedback and then luckily all the feedback have been really wonderful and uh, just because the other person had more relevant experience right they went with that person so mm-hmm. so i said okay you know as you received a positive feedback you know i actually learned about opm role and i would be interested in this role so yeah the recruiter was kind enough to let me know that you know uh, pass on my profile to other recruiters in the in the team but yeah i didn't hear back <laughs> mm-hmm. so uh, yes yeah, so but i i didn't want to stop there right so what i did was i went on to linkedin and then i researched uh, for different apple recruiters and uh, when i was doing that search uh, so when you actually look at the recruiters description sometimes they clearly mention what role they are hiring for so i found this one recruiter who is hiring for an opm role so i i approached her and i sent an email and then in the email i clearly mentioned why i'm interested in this role and uh, maybe you know i just uh, sent like three key highlights of my role on why i would be a good fit and then i was hoping to get in a, a a call with her so and and i didn't really expect a response because most of this most of the times when you are approaching people right you wouldn't really get a response but all we need is mm-hmm. that one response and one call right to make it uh so the recruiter actually res- responded but she mentioned that you know uh she looked at my profile and the recruiter one would be my contact and they both work in the same team so um, i gave like a month or two and then now uh, and then i sent a follow up email and uh, you know i just wanted to check if they have any other update and then uh, i believe this time i probably did not hear back from them and then uh, and then i started to focus on one of my business uh, program and then i got busy with my exams and assignment October last year I I got an email from this recruiter too who I reached out and then she mentioned hey you told me that you are interested in an OPM role and I have couple of openings with uh, different teams if you are if you are still interested you know we could have a call so that's how my apple journey has started and uh, i'm so glad you know i was persuasive and then i didn't give up and then being persistent and following up really helped me and finally i was able to get that opportunity and once uh, i got into the interview process i had a very uh, first call with the recruiter and then i had um, two phone screen technical phone screens 
And then I also had one whole day on site, back to back interviews with eight different people. Wow. Uh, I know. <laughs> usually That's a long time. <laughs> yeah, usually it would have been on site, but uh, due to the pandemic, I did everything online. And then after that, I had to create a presentation and present to a panel on a topic. And then finally, I had another uh, final round with the director. <laughs> so it's a very intense process. <laughs> I was able to make it and I want to uh, communicate that uh, people usually have this impression. Even I always thought that only uh, students from Ivy League com uh, colleges, you know, would make it to top companies. Uh, so, but I, I highly believe uh, either you are coming from a non-traditional background or non-target uh, university, definitely there is a ha there is possibility for you to go for any company or you know any career path that you would like. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't matter which college you come from or what your GPA resume is. It's more about mm -hmm. yourself, your ambition, and your ability to sell yourself, your ability to connect. And it was you and your relationship ability and connectability with these companies, with people on LinkedIn and the recruiters, what made you stand out. And you opened the door and we're able to walk through it. And man, congrats. That's, mm -hmm. that's, I love that story. And it's a great <laughs> example that just how applying online probably isn't going to get it done for most people. All right, friends, our chai question for you in this video is what are the top colleges in America for industrial engineering? Uh, it's a big major, uh, big in demand, as Nanamiti has been talking about. What are the best colleges and universities in America with industrial engineering? Let us know in the comments. Obviously, Nanamiti, you love Texas Tech, but what are a couple other good programs that you know of here in the U.S.? So when I actually applied for Texas Tech, I also applied for Auburn Universities, and it's a great uh, university for an industrial engineering uh, degree. And uh, one of the reasons why I didn't pursue was it was very, very expensive for me. Uh, so that's the reason I didn't go for Auburn, but um, uh, definitely, but if you're able to get a scholarship or offer, definitely go for Auburn University. So now that you've gotten that job at Apple, what does the day in the life look like for you there as an operations program manager at Apple? Before I talk about my day day to day at Apple, I would also talk about my day to day of an industrial engineer because this is one of the questions that I always get asked. So I would describe my industrial engineer experience as uh, like three different buckets. So the very first one is I will because I'm in a, a production environment. I'm working on assembly line. Uh, we get a lot of different issues every day, and it's not always the same issues. So you have to uh, put out a lot of fires every single day. So you should be able to think quickly and uh, come up with a solution and being able to uh, uh, do the root cause analysis. And you know that's, that's one of the uh, first portion. Mm -hmm. And the second bucket, which is my favorite, is working on new product development. So as we can constantly work on improving our current process, the companies always come up with new innovations and new products. So as an industrial engineer, what, what's my responsibility or what, what's my role is, so when a product designer designs a product, um, so definitely the product designers might not be spending a lot of time in a factory or manufacturing setting. So, uh, so as a design wise, it might look really good, but uh, when we have to materialize that, the intricacies of uh, complications of assembling or you know combining two parts, that's where my expertise come in. So as an industrial engineer, I should be able to give that feedback on, hey, you know, this is a good design, but you know, these are the current issues we are having with this manufacturing process. So maybe with this new product, we should be able to resolve that. When you are involved in a product design, the sooner you find the, the problems, the better it is for the company. So if you actually do it in a later stage, it would cost a lot for the company. So that's where a manufacturing engineer or industrial engineer expertise are needed. And the third portion is as an industrial engineer, we constantly work on, okay, how do we uh, continuously implement our process and make more products in a day uh, and then uh, save some money for the business, right? Like cost reduction projects. So, so those are my typical day-to-day -day for an IE. And uh, now going to OPM role. Um, so as an OPM, uh, similar to a software program manager, even for us uh, as an operation program manager, I work uh, specifically on new product developments. So uh, in my day-to-day, -day, I have to interact with a lot of different cross-functional teams. So I would have a lot of meetings and um, it's very important to have that communication skill. As an IE, you would still need the communication skills. You would still work with cross-functional teams, but in a small scale or in a factory setting. But as an OPM, now you're working in a large scale and you are interacting with supply chain or 
uh, manufacturing engineers and you know all these different things. And then I also always get asked on how does this industrial engineer experience help for the OPM, OPM role? So as an industrial engineer, you are the one who are resolving the issues and technical problems, right? So as an OPM, now you are on the other side. You are asking a, a engineer or technical person to resolve a uh, problem. As a program manager, you should be able to look at a big picture, but at the same time, going into details and deep dive whenever is needed. So having that past experience of an industrial engineer would really help for an OPM. And I would also say uh, as part of my day to day, I need to influence others. So all these different uh, team members, they don't actually report to me, but even then, you know, uh, I need to make sure, you know, they're also doing their task uh, on time, uh, even though it's my priority, right? So it's, it's very important to build those connections and then being able to leverage those connections when, when there is a critical situation. So that's kind of like connectivity and you know how an industrial engineer could become a good OPM. Well, Melanie, thanks so much for telling your story about industrial engineering, the jobs, and even just your own job search that I think students mm -hmm. are going to learn so much for. So we really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Rab, for, for having me. And uh, I just want to give one final tip uh, for all the students and young professionals. Be curious, you know, read a lot, constantly grow yourself. And not only like learning, right? Uh, try to find an opportunity where you could implement what you learn. Yeah, and give back to the community. It's always good to help others. I really wish you all the best of luck in your career path. That's so true. And that's what Shine Coaching Not is all about, is creating a community where you guys can give back, tell your mm -hmm. stories, invest in one another. We invite mm -hmm. you guys to join the community, be a part of it. Connect us online on social media. Be sure mm -hmm. to be subscribed to the Shine Coaching newsletter so you get great resources, tips, upcoming live events. And again, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time at Shine Coaching. Cheers.